everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and add fluent validation. So first of all, let's go ahead into the CS proj, remove this reference, and see which models break so we can see what we actually need to validate. And everything built without a problem, which tells me this is a lie. And I, for a fact, remember that it was in a add customer information. So this should all right, light up in red, as it does. Okay, now we get it. And it all seems to be an add customer information. Okay, so we are lucky we only have one name, uh, one model to be validating. Really, we can do more. But let's go ahead into Shop UI. This is where we want to go manage Nougat packages. Let's click on Browse and let's type in Fluent Validation. And here is this uh, package, Fluent Validation, ASP.NET Core. That's what we want it to install. Okay. And the thing that we want to take care of now is uh, essentially porting this uh, setup to Fluent Validation. So first thing that we need to do is go into Startup. And wherever we add MVC, we also want to add Fluent Validation. So let's uh, add... Uh, Fluent validation, and we'll need to import the namespace using Fluent validation ASP.NET Core. Okay, and really this can be added on uh, really only on the IMVC builder. So make sure that wherever you have your add MVC, that's where it's added onto. So how Fluent validation works? The way .NET Core abstracts the whole validation mechanism. Fluent validation does exactly the same, right? But the way .NET Core exposes validation through you to you is through these data annotations, okay? And the way Fluent validation exposes this configuration to you is through creation of custom classes. So let's go ahead and create a folder, and we'll call it validation contexts. This is basically where all the validation configuration is going to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the configuration that we're going to have. And this is going to be for this customer information uh, request. So customer, or rather, let's go ahead and copy the full name here. And now shift F2, add customer information uh, request validation. Okay, uh, biggest class name that I made, not really. And uh, now what we want to do is similarly to how we add our service attribute to our services to register and the, uh, register them in the dependency injection container. But instead, what uh, this uh, what Fluent Validation gives us is uh, first of all to to have access to all the underlying fun all the hidden away functionality of validation. We want to inherit from uh, Abstract validator. All right, let's import using validation. And what abstract validator will need is a type. And our type is going to be add customer information. Let's import this and let's say request. Okay, so now this is essentially going to start tracking our type. And uh, in here, we can go ahead and specify the rules for validating this okay so if we go into the abstract validator uh, essentially all we want to do is create a constructor so let's go ahead and create a constructor and inside of this constructor again if i go here we get our for rule right which will accept an expression a function of type t so Anytime we're going to be creating an expression with a function, uh, the parameter that we're going to be passing is essentially going to be this uh, object that we have specified here, right? So this object here, if we go ahead and call uh, rule for, okay, this x is going to be this request here, okay? So now what we want to do is essentially just go ahead and select a property for us for now let's put it here and uh, 
let me make this a little bit smaller and hide the solution. Okay, so we can see it side by side. For now, first, let's grab the first name. And once we have selected the property that we want to add validation for, we now get a plethora, like a lot of different ways that we can basically specify uh, what rules we want, what validation rules we want for uh, this uh, property. So let's go ahead and say, if it's not null, right? We uh, If it's required, we have to specify that it's not null, essentially. There is uh, uh, no such thing as required here, right? That's a... A data annotation attribute that Microsoft provides and the not null is something that Flint validation does. So let's go ahead, copy this for all of these. So I'll copy last name, put it here, email, put it here, phone number, address. Uh, address 2 doesn't have any validation, so I'll remove that. City and postcode. Okay, so we pretty much uh managed to specify that it is all required now what we want to do is specify that an email is an email address okay so nice and easy we just add email address and for the no phone number it's really a little bit trickier uh there are uh, you know there are different phone numbers depending on when, where you live in uk it can be like 11 digits if you are from uh, like eastern europe it may be somewhere between uh, eight or nine or something like that so let's just say minimum length i would like to have a uh, seven okay so the phone number has to be at least seven digits and this takes care of the data annotations here okay so we have created this uh, abstract validation this uh, essentially this validation context and there are really two ways to add this uh, to work uh, with our whole thing. The non-preferred way, and I'm just going to show you, if you look at the documentation, you're really you're just going to find it out anyway. But uh, what we want to do is we want to say something like I validator and uh, we'll import uh, this uh, namespace and we basically just specify the type. And we basically just have to pass in the validation context here and the type that it's going to be validating to iValidator. Okay, just like that. And we'll have to import this. And as you can see, this really is, uh, takes up the whole screen and uh, too wordy. So we're not going to use that. Uh, that is okay if you have like one validator. But the preferred solution, I think, will be to grab the... Uh, and to basically pass a function here. And in here, we can basically uh, take this uh, Fluent Validation and we see configuration, and we can uh, basically tell it to register validators from somewhere in the same way that we are kind of doing with our ad application services. The background functionality behind this is kind of the same since we're gonna be register validators from assembly. So, Let's go ahead, call this, and this will need an assembly. So let's go ahead and say type of startup, right? So I'm just going to say this class, and because it resides in the UI assembly and this resides in the UI assembly, I'm just going to go ahead and call assembly on this. So I'm, essen I'm essentially grabbing the assembly of this uh, Application. Let's see what this is crying about. Okay, so uh, this is obsolete. We just want to use API key, and we just want to set it, I guess. Uh, please use. Yeah, I guess just API key equals like that, and I guess this is a static class where this will be a static string. Okay. So the thing with static classes, there are they are initialized once. So at the start of our uh, at the start of the application, this would already exist, and no matter no matter where we set this, this will be globally changed for the whole application. Okay, so we could set this in uh, our program.cs or somewhere in the service, but until that function is called, but this is called right at the start, so it will be it will be set 
pretty much at the start of our application. Okay, so we set up our Flume validation. Here is our rules for validating this specific object. And uh, here is how we register any future potential validator validation rules. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see if this works. Okay, so let's grab any old t-shirt, check out, and let's do something like this, cross out the email. Okay, and here we get the <clears throat> validation rules and the, <laughs> the text is really bad, I can't see it. So let's go ahead and actually change that. So page, check out customer information, and I think is warning. I'll say everywhere where I help, help is warning. I'm going to change it to help is danger and I'm going to be careful to select current document and change this everywhere. Okay, so let's refresh this, resubmit, and now I get red. Okay, so it's a little bit easier. So let's see if it checks. Yep, so we get email validation and uh, okay. Yeah, so we pretty much get all that we need. Uh, so aa.com, phone number. Okay, nice. So that appears to be working. We have essentially successfully extracted all the functionality from our application layer regarding to our database and .NET Core. So now if we take a look at our application, it is a essentially a .NET standard library, which depends on another .NET standard library, and we can really just put it on the Nougat Packet Ma Package Manager and, and Nougat Package Manager, and anybody can ex import this, right? But anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and see you in my other episodes.